I would like to thank you for uh, opening my eyes to how important it is not to follow any What's faith. the name, sister? What's the name, sister? My name is Priya. Priya. Okay, sister. First of all, I would like to thank you for opening my eyes to how important it is to not follow any faith or religion blindly. Mashallah. Now I realize how important it is to have questions to what you should and should not follow blindly. So my question is uh, for why was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, only the last prophet and no one after to guide in this sinful world? This is a very good question. That why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger. Why will no other messenger come after him? That's a very good question. People also ask me that why wasn't Prophet Muhammad sent the first and Quran revealed first, then no problem. Both questions are valid. Both are valid. Like my son says that I want to become a doctor. Why don't you put me in medical college directly? I said, no, but first you have to go, my son, to the nursery, Junior Geji, first standard, second standard, step by step. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, he knows the human being the best. He knows what is the final message. He knows that the human beings have not yet developed to receive the last and final message. So therefore, all the preachers were to go to nursery, you study A, B, C, D, and then you keep on going ahead. Then mathematics, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Then you study other things, multiplication, division, and you keep on evolving. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that when human beings were there, first he gave them simple message depending upon the development. And Allah thought 1400 years ago was the right time that now human beings have developed to assimilate the Quran. But the beauty of the Quran is Allah knew that human being would further develop but the minimum requirement to receive the Quran was 1400 years ago. Human being that they since hundreds of thousands and millions of years. Allah alam, we don't know. We don't know. So what did Allah do? Allah reveals the last and final message the Quran and the last and final message Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because when the last message comes it has a time period. And the last messenger comes, he's the final messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's revealed the last and final message. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 3, On this day have I completed your religion for you and have chosen Islam for you and have completed my favor for you. Allah is telling the human being, on this day, this was the last verse of the Quran to be revealed, I have completed my religion for you and have chosen for you Islam. Now once Allah has completed the religion, nothing new can be added, nothing can be subtracted. If something is added, that means the previous thing wasn't complete, correct? Allah, five, ten fingers, if you add eleven, it's not complete. So Allah has completed the deen and completed the last and final revelation, the Quran, by the last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where is this mentioned? As I said in my lecture, Surah Azab chapter 33, verse number 40. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirjalikum walaki rasulallah wa khatamin nabi. Ma kana la bi kulli shayin alima. That Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and seal of the prophets. Now, why did now when Allah revealed the last and final message, the human beings keep on developing and we understand the Quran better. Science has developed the way we understand the Quran now. We understand a little bit better of the Quran because science has developed. But the message is the same. Now since the message will not change, we don't require a messenger. So what does Allah do? Allah tells the Muslim, tells the Muslim, it is your duty now to deliver the message. And I said in my talk, Allah says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 110, Kuntum khaira ummatin khrijatlin Allah. So because there will be no other messenger, because if a messenger comes, there has to be a message. So the scholars and the dais, 
the people with excellent knowledge and the dais who deliver the message they are the torch bearers they deliver the message to make people understand therefore it is our duty to go in different parts of the world and deliver the message to the whole of humankind so no one can say that the message did not reach us now once the final message is there allah gives a time period we don't know there is a time period till when the world will end we don't know allah knows only allah knows when will the world end but there are signs for the end of the world in the hadith there are minor signs and there are major signs in the minor signs in my post book face i have given 87 minor signs and 10 major signs in the minor signs one of the first sign minor sign for the end of the world is the coming of the last and final messenger prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's a minor sign that now the world is going to end but how long will it take allah wala 100 years 200 years 1000 years 10000 we don't know so that was the first minor sign coming of the last and final messenger one of the first few signs earliest sign of the end of the world is the coming of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then there are other many signs you can go to my facebook then the major signs will start so the reason allah did not get a new messenger because quran is the last and final message there is no new message no new messenger but allah saw to it that he told the muslim ummah that we have to deliver the message to the others and he said that the best profession for the muslim is of a dai which i touched in my talk prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last messenger and i said in my talk because he was the last messenger he was rahmatullah alamin if he was not he would have been only rahma to the arab world correct if he was if there is one more messenger to come he would have been meant only for one group of people maybe the arab world maybe the quran was meant only for 100 years 1000 years 2000 we don't know so because allah says this is the last and final revelation and prophet muhammad is the last and final messenger it is meant for the whole of humanity that the reason the status of the prophet is higher because the status is higher and the message is higher you can see the transformation much faster today in the world more than 25% of the human population are muslims today in the world the most looked down upon people in the world are the muslims the most targeted people in the world are the muslims the most criticized people in the world are the muslims everyone is against us yet the message is going it is the end of time sister so because it is the end of time there will be new there will be no other messenger but the power of the message is so strong it is encompassing many people in the world the previous people who accepted the religion christianity etc they were just namesake today in the world when people say christian they don't follow christianity the people that follow any religion practically following any religion number one is islam so the basic answer sisters because the message is last the messenger has to be last but the message is so strong and the message is so loving so powerful so universal that it's transforming the world hope that answers the question sister thank you so much you. okay uh, we have uh, is there um, any other question sister oh uh, yes 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 most welcome so i just had last question why did allah create this world and put us through this test when he had to end it and the world again sister asked another important question that why did allah create this world and put us into it why if he has to end it the answer to this question is given in surah dhariyat chapter number 15 verse number 15 it says wa ma khalaqtul jinna illa li abdu وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That we have created not but the men and the jinn, but to worship you. This life history is the test for the hereafter. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, أَلَّا ذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good indeed. So this life history is the test for the hereafter. Like you asking a teacher, why are you taking examination? In the examination system, some people pass, some people fail, correct? So if you follow the guidelines of the teacher, you will pass. If you don't follow, you will fail. So the teacher is testing who is worth passing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's mentioned in the Quran, asked 
Who would like to undergo this test? Allah says in the Quran, we human beings were fools to accept it. The mountains shuddered, we will not accept. We, so Allah says, who would like to undergo this test? Of course, you and I don't remember. Correct? You and I don't remember. On the day of judgment, again we'll remember. So Allah says in the Quran that the mountains shuddered. We don't, we human beings were fools who accepted the challenge. If you pass, if you pass, you become higher than the angels. You know, angels are a creation of Allah who follow everything what Allah says. They have no option. So if they, they have no option, they cannot go against. So what is great? They are following Allah. They are good. So if human beings who have been given the option to go against Allah or follow the commandment of Allah, we have a free will. If we follow the commandment of Allah after being given a free will, then we become higher than the angels. If we don't follow, we go below. So Allah asked us, do you want to undergo the test where all the others are Muslim, the tree is a Muslim, the obey the commandment, you become the highest. If you fail, so we were human beings who said we want to undergo the test. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a new creation. Human beings who had a free will of their own. And we were the people who opted. And now, sister, we are undergoing the test. And the, and the guide is the Quran. The instruction manual of the human being is the Quran. When you appear for an examination, there is a textbook, correct? The textbook of the examination is the Quran. And the guide of the Quran is the Sahih Hadith. So sister, we are undergoing a test in this world. Test for the hereafter. And that is the reason we are trying to score high marks. If we, give, we pass, we go to Jannah. If we fail, we go to Jannah. That is the reason we say that the minimum thing to come just pass marks is to believe in one God. And believe Prophet Muhammad is the God. At least you enter. If you enter the school, at least your chances of passing there. And then you may get whether second class, first class distinction. But at least you have to enter, sister. Sister, do you believe there is one God? Yes, I do. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, I do. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? Yes, definitely. MashaAllah. Khalas. So if you believe... <laughs> if you believe that there is one God, and you believe idol worship is wrong, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah, then according to me, you are a Muslim. Sister, would you like to say the Shada? Would you like to say it in Arabic? There are tears of joy, sister. Would you like to enter the fold? According to me, already a Muslim. Would you like to proclaim it? Yes. Yes? MashaAllah. Takbir. I hope no one is forcing you, sister. You are doing it out of your own free will. Yes. And I'm asking you because you said that we have heard my you have heard my lectures, so surely you may be having a substantial some knowledge of Islam. Yes, I do. Mashallah, sister. I'll just say it in Arabic and you can repeat it, sister. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Have the microphone closed, please. Allah. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, wa Rasuluhu. Wa I bear witness. I bear witness that, that there is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that, that Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. Takbir. 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 MashaAllah sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you Janita Firdos and really you have taken a bold step and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you more and may he help you because I can make out MashaAllah that you have already gained a lot of knowledge and your questions were very questions of intelligence and MashaAllah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more knowledge of the deen may he help you to guide your parents, guide your family members and guide your friend sister Jazakallah shukran sister may Allah reward you MashaAllah
Mashallah. Two more. Mashallah. I think we should change the question answer session to Sharda session. <laughs> Mashallah. That is good. Mashallah. This is Alhamdulillah. This is the barka of Oman. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to another video of Dr. Zakir Naik as you know that nowadays Dr. Zakir Naik visit to Oman for giving lecture or Islamic Dawa so we will uh, make videos for you we will uh, make the selected clips which uh, increase your knowledge about your Islam about your knowledge and I think so many people have been converted Islam due to this uh, public visit of uh, Dr. Zakir Naik to Oman. So if you really want to upgrade yourself uh, about the latest video of Dr. Zakir Naik, so watch the subscribe our channel and share it with your friends and your family members. I hope you like the video as well.